she did not cry when she was born. Uh, the nurse even said, oh, what a beautiful baby you have, or a good baby you have. A good baby, they said, one who grew into a precocious toddler with no fear. She would fall down or, or run into something or something like that and just not even be phased by it. Soon the Blocker family realized baby Ashlyn wasn't just putting on a brave face. Their tough little girl was a little too tough. She was in her high chair, and she literally um, put her pointer finger in her mouth and just ripped the skin right off. And, I mean, she wasn't upset. She wasn't crying. That accident led to another. Be careful up there. Be careful. There was just blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, she had mutilated her bottom lip to no avail. Um, just chewing it while she was asleep. She had touched her hand on a hot pressure washer motor, and she burnt the palm of her hand and all the tips of her fingers. Doctors finally realized Ashlyn was her own worst enemy, literally. She simply can't feel pain. I was not looking where I was going, and then I crashed, and then my ankle got broken. But did you know it was broken? And I just kept on going. It's called congenital insensitivity to pain. A pair of genetic mutations short-circuited the pain signals that go to Ashlyn's brain. She's just one of 20 documented cases in the U.S. Only 40 exist in the entire world. My mom just tells me I'm very, very special. We can really learn from individuals like, like this child what it really means to be at the opposite end of uh, feeling essentially no pain. How are you doing there, Ashlyn? Ashlyn is helping researchers study pain like never before. They want to know if there's a master switch for pain and how to turn it on and off. Does a lack of pain impact emotions, and can that person still show compassion towards others? But most importantly, this little girl may hold the key for the nation's 70 million chronic pain patients. If they just could have one mole molecule like the way Ashlyn has, mm -hmm. you know, they would have the pay perfect painkiller. And right. I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty, wow. Yeah. That painkiller may just save someone like Robert Hinton. The extreme pain that I get um, is like someone dousing my body in gasoline and just constantly lighting a match. Um, there are days where my spinal cord feels like somebody's pulling it out of my body with a pair of tweezers. A car crash led to a nerve injury, which led to the diagnosis of reflex sympathetic dystrophy. That's a chronic neurological syndrome that causes constant burning in the hands and legs. And I swallowed 35 pills one night. And I said a prayer to God. And I said, I want to go home to heaven because I can't take this pain anymore. Robert survived that and survives now by mostly grinning and bearing it as treatment is limited. He does get powerful infusions of pain meds, but those put him into a coma for days. Doctors say after this kind of pain has been present for six months, it becomes irreversible. Patients may also suffer muscle atrophy, loss of mobility, and contorted limbs. I've gone through having over 100 epidurals and nerve blocks just to try and get the pain where it's tolerable. A man whose pain won't stop, a girl who can't even begin to feel pain at all. We want Ashlyn to have the best life possible. And we're going to do everything under our power to ensure that. Um, we're blessed to have her. There's a reason for her. This is how Ashland plays sports. It's a shame, but it's the only way to keep her safe. I wear Jose. Nothing's going to get me. A feisty girl doubling is the holy grail for pain treatment if doctors can only solve the riddle before she does permanent damage to herself. Ramin Khalili reporting.